Are you looking to create a professional racy chart in Excel? Well, in this video, I'm going to be showing you step by step exactly how to create this racy chart on screen with interactive drop downs and smart formatting. Now, if you are not familiar with racy charts, don't worry, I will quickly explain what they are before diving into how you can build one yourself. If you are short of time or just want to pick up this pre-built, pre-formatted template, there will be a link in the description down below, which will enable you to do so. But first things first, what is a racy chart? Well, it's a project management tool that shows who is responsible for what in any project or process. Now, it's also called a racy matrix, sometimes even a responsibility assignment matrix, other terms for essentially the same thing. Basically, this artifact maps out roles and responsibilities so everyone knows exactly what they are supposed to do. Now, RACI is an acronym, and that stands for and breaks down as follows. R is for responsible. Basically, these are the people who actually do the work. They're the ones performing the task or activity. A is for accountable. This is the person who owns the outcome and makes the final decision. So they will sign off on the work and answer for whether it gets done. Now, this is really important. Only one person should be accountable per task. C is for consulted. These are your subject matter experts or stakeholders whose input you need. Think technical experts, users, or anyone with specialized knowledge. And I is for informed. These are the people who need to know what's happening, but don't actively participate. So they're kept in the loop on progress and outcomes. Now, if you want to dive deeper into how to actually use RACI charts effectively, I've got another video on my channel that walks through the best practices and some examples as well. Again, link in the description down below. But let us now turn to building out this interactive RACI chart in Excel from scratch. So I'm gonna open up a new tab or new sheets in order for us to do that. Now, first things first, always good idea to put the document title up near the top. That way, if someone opens this up, you share it with a stakeholder, they know exactly what they're looking at. Obviously, I need to spell it correct in order for us to get started. So I'm going to type Racy Matrix in B2 and just increase the font size accordingly. Now, what you can do underneath is you can put a placeholder for the project title and you can also put a placeholder for the project manager. That way you can input this information and use this more as a template for each project that you create essentially. Now, what I'm gonna do is build out the main RACI matrix. I'll be doing some formatting as we go along. Bear in mind, you can format this to meet your organization's branding, colors, and your own even bespoke needs. I'll just be showing you how you can essentially be doing that. So. Let's start in B9 and then go across one to C9. What we're gonna put in here is the deliverable or the task. Now we can put status in here. So this could be something like in progress. Um, it could be completed, not started. We'll be setting this up as a drop down shortly. And don't worry, I will be doing the full formatting after I've kind of inputted the main uh, data fields. In here, I'm gonna put sponsor slash leadership. And then I'm going to, let's just give a few columns. So let's go across a few. And then in H9, we're gonna put in project team. Again, we can always adjust this accordingly. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. So jump a few more, and then let's just go in L, and then let's do other resources. And then what I'm gonna do in between these is I'm just gonna select E9 through to G9, merge and center. We'll do H9, through to K9, merge and center. Then let's just do L9 through to O9 and merge and center. Now, what we're gonna to want to do here is above, so in E8, we are going to put sponsor in here. That will be the project sponsor. And then we're gonna put name or role. And we're gonna put name or role. And then we're gonna put name or role. Now what we'll do here is I'm going to select from E8 or E5 through to E8 and then go across to 
expand over to H5 to H8, that content area here. And then on this little drop down in the home ribbon, we're going to change this to vertical, uh, rotate text up. And what that's essentially done here, you'll see that is it's just made the text kind of appear on its side. And that's just really, really useful for formatting. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put project manager in here. And then I'm going to put, I did a control C, name or role, control, control V, control V. I am using a Windows. That shortcut will be a bit different if you're using a Mac. But what we're essentially doing here is let's just put in consultant in here and then control V, or oh, we need to copy it again. Control C, control V, control V. What this essentially does is these are, this is placeholder text. So this is where we, we, we would be putting the sponsor. This is where we'd be putting someone on the leadership team. This is where we'd be putting the project manager's name. Um, and this is where we'd be putting, you know, the, the name of someone on the project team. So it could be an account manager name uh, or and or role as well. So we've got that in place. Now, what we're going to do here is we can put, this could be phases, it could be milestones, but I'm just going to put phases now, for instance, and then I'm going to put deliverable one or task one. Now, again, this is all placeholder content. We are creating a template here. So what I'm now going to do is in C10 on the home ribbon, I'm just going to increase the indent and that creates this kind of relationship here. And then if I drag this down, so if I hover over the bottom right of deliverable task one, uh, you'll see that little kind of plus black uh, icon. Then I'm going to drag that down and then we've got deliverable one, task one. This should be deliverable two, task two, etc. Now, what we can then do is go from C9 through to C11, control C, uh, and then go in C12, control V, in C15, control V. And then let's just change these to phase two and to phase three. So that just saves a little bit of time having to kind of manually type them out. Now, what we're going to do at this point is just put some kind of um, some coloring in, some 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 fill. And what that will enable us to do is just kind of break up some of this uh, to make it easier to kind of see. So what I'm going to do here, and I might adjust this as we go, but I'll put a kind of darker gray in here. I'll put this same color in there. And then what we're going to do for phase one is we'll go for a slightly lighter gray. And that, as you'll see, just shows, it just makes it kind of easier on the eye, okay? But we can use different colors, but what you essentially want to do is use a different kind of shading so you can get that kind of distinction between the kind of core part of the matrix and the phases. That's essentially what we're looking for here. At which point we are in quite good shape. Let's just put uh, a border around this, uh, all border. So I'm gonna go from C7 through to O17. I'm gonna go all borders. And what we are then gonna do is we want to, uh, let's make the status column a bit like that. And then what I'm gonna want to do in these is I'm gonna want kind of squares. We're gonna want squares in here. So to do that, if I select column E, hold shift on my keyboard, go through to O, and then I'm going to make these a, a kind of narrower width. We'll go to about, let's go to about 6.29 roughly. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go from, uh, let's go from, yeah, let's go from row nine through to row seven. No, let's go down. Let's give, give us a little bit of exp expanded space. And then I'm going to make these kind of, let's go to 37.5. No, that's a bit too much. Let's go there. We, we're essentially looking for squares. So we've got kind of nice squares here. So these could actually be a bit narrower, but you'll just see there. It just makes it kind of look better on the eye there. So if we wanted to add, by the way, if we wanted to add uh, kind of a new uh, individual, you just kind of right click here and go insert. And then you just obviously put that individual in. If we wanted to add a new deliverable, we just kind of right click in here and go insert. And then you just kind of adjust it accordingly. So let me just drag that down. And there we go. That's how that would essentially work. Now let's set up the status column. I'm just gonna put all borders around this for now. So from C7 through to C18, have we got our all borders on? Yes, we do. Uh, let's put some borders around this. I just wanna make it more distinct. Uh, let's go there. I think it's the color of my border. Yes, let's go put that a bit darker. Let's put that a bit darker and that would be a bit more clear. Now, what we're gonna want to do in the status is I'm gonna select column D and I'm going to click on data. I'm going to select data validation, data validation, 
And in the allow, I'm gonna change this to list. And then in the source, we're gonna put not started, on hold, no, let's just go in progress first. In progress, that's more logical. On hold, completed, and we'll put in cancelled as well because it could be that an activity or task is no longer required. So press OK. Now, what this has essentially enabled us to do is just have these options here. Now, I've messed that up. So if I go back there, data, data validation, data validation, I should put a comma in there. Oh, if you're not careful, you can mess it up. Let's cancel that. Data validation, data validation. I just want to select there and comma. Okay, so now we have the right statuses. So yeah, deliverable one as an example, not started. Not started, we'd, we'd put that down for the, for, for the lot, but let's just say that one is in progress. You get the idea, that's how essentially that would work for each deliverable as and when they start. And you can even do that on the phase level as well. I'm actually gonna bold, I'm gonna bold all of this. I'm gonna bold this and bold this and bold this. That kind of looks better visually. So this is what we're essentially doing. Now, what I would do at this point is I would build out the the um, roles and responsibilities area, which is kind of like a key. So I'd be typing in roles and responsibilities. And it's useful to do this because even if you are aware of what that acronym is, responsibilities, excuse the, the spelling. Let me get that right. R-E-S-P-O-N-S-I-B-I-L-I-T-I-E-S. Sorry, I was talking at the same time. I was trying to put that in and that's just mess with my brain a bit there. But they put roles and responsibilities, and then we're gonna to want to put the acronym in, so R-A-C-I, and then what you can do is put your definition in here. And that's just useful if you if you send this to uh, another stakeholder, or even to jog your own memory. So assign to complete, you know what I'm gonna do? Just to save time, I'm just gonna go in here, and I'm just gonna copy this across, okay? So I'm just gonna go in here like this, and I'm just going to put that in like that. So I just copied and pasted that, but you'll see here what I've put in here, but it's just a, a brief description as to what each is. I'm going to put these in the middle as well. Now, what I'm gonna do here, so I put those in the middle, that was a middle align, if you didn't see that on the home ribbon. I'm also going to, sorry, that's middle align. I could put them in the middle of the, the cell and I centered as well. So that's what we've done here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in some different colors for uh, this these different roles and responsibilities. So if I go back to our racy chart template here, just to show you what we've got in the template, kind of got a gray, an orange, a blue, and a yellow. So we could put a gray in here, an orange, gray, orange, blue, and a yellow. We've got a blue, and we've got a yellow. Just make sure you are aware of the kind of colors you use. I think Let's see that kind of color actually, yes, let's do that one. And then what we're gonna basically do here is, well this as well, is we're gonna set up some, um, we're gonna set up some conditional formatting so that, um, no, let's not do that first. What we're gonna do actually, sorry, is set up the drop downs first. So let's do the drop downs. So what you wanna do is go from E9 through to P18, which is the full content area. You might need to adjust this. We're gonna go data, depending on the size of your AC matrix. We're gonna go data validation, data validation. And in the allow, we're gonna put list. And then in the source, left click in here, we're gonna go to then left click in R through to I, and we're gonna press okay. And what that basically does, as you'll see, is that enables us to choose one of the options. So, the next thing I'm gonna do is go from E9 through to E18, and I am going to middle align and center. That way, when we start putting it in, you'll see it goes obviously in here. So that looks great. So obviously at this point, you could start to add your roles and responsibilities, but what we want is the colors to come through. So to do that, we need to use conditional formatting. So all we have to do at this point is click on conditional formatting, and we want to set up a new rule. So we want to format all set, format only cells that contain. Now the cell value, it will be specific text containing, let's do R first, and then the format is going to be that light gray. So color, we need to make sure we match what we've chosen here. And we will do that for now, just set that up, border. So you can do all of this, fill, let's do that. Press OK. Now, if I was to do R, 
what I messed that up. I need to go here, manage rules. So where where's my current selection? This worksheet. So applies to this needs to apply. Sorry to this content area. It needs to basically if it sees R in this area, it needs to go into this kind of gray. Apply, and then I'll press OK. And then if I did A, obviously it wouldn't. It's not. A, we've not set up a rule for that yet. But if we did R, it goes into that what we've just set up. But as you'll see. I need to go back into my rule because what I didn't do is the text color is wrong. So font, I'm gonna the font should have been this, and the board the, the fill, sorry, should have been that gray. So if I press OK, press OK, and then apply, you'll see it's come through. And what we could probably do as well is put some bolding on. I think that would be much better uh, for like visually. So press OK. Press OK, apply, and you'll see it's come through. Now, if we did responsible for, let's just say, this individual responsible for deliverable task two, again, you've got that kind of gray. So now you just need to go through that process and create this for all of the different roles and responsibilities. So again, what I'd be doing here is I'd be doing conditional formatting, new rule, format only cells that contain specific text containing, uh, this would be uh, this here, Format would be um, fill, would be this orange. Font would be black, and we're gonna bold. Press OK, press OK. And then let's go back into that, manage rules. And then applies to, should be equal, should be this content area again. And then it's basically just going through this process for each and every, each and every role and responsibility. And by the end, you should have it set up so that you've got these kind of colors and formatting set up so that when you start putting them in, the colors come through accordingly. So that is how essentially you create a racy chart in Excel. Now you'll notice that this is a lot more basic than the formatting that I've applied here. I don't wanna go into too much detail in this video, um, but this would just be a matter of going through and just changing how some of this all looks, the colors used. So as an example, this has kind of got a gray bottom area. So that would just be things like uh, going in here and then just putting that kind of gray on. You know, you could change the, the, uh, the height here to make it look more of a border. So you get the idea, we could change all the phases. So this is essentially how you go about manipulating it to look as professional as possible. And at the end, you could just remove the grid lines. But as I say, that is how to create a racy matrix in Excel. If you want to learn how to now use this, watch the next video. If you want to pick up this template, this one you'll see right here. Again, link in the description down below. I hope this video has been useful. With that said, best of luck over to you and I hope you have an excellent day.